So now let me introduce um, uh, the speaker of the second talk, um, which is Xian Zhi Li. Um, so his um, talk title is Robust 3D Point Cloud Analysis Via Deep Learning Approaches. Uh, Xian Zhi Li is recently joined the School of Computer Science and Technology, Huadong University of Science and Technology as an associate professor. Proud to that, she was a postdoctoral um, post fellow at the Chinese University of Hong Kong and the Hong Kong Center for Logistic Robotics. She received a PhD degree in computer science from the CUHK in 2020. Her research interests are in 3D vision and computer graphics with a recent focus on developing machine learning methods to advance the processing, analysis, and understanding of 3D point cloud data. So essentially, now the floor is yours. So let me- okay, Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thanks for the introduction. Uh, today, I would like to uh, share our works that focus on robust 3D point cloud analysis where deep learning approaches uh, in this talk, I will first give a brief introduction to the background of deep point cloud analysis, um, and then introduce our two works, uh, rotation environment point cloud analysis and, uh, and supervised uh, distinctive region detection, uh, then followed by the conclusion of future work. Uh, as Philip has introduced uh, in recent years, due to the popularity of various depth scanning devices, uh, the amount of accessible 3D data has increased by several orders of magnitude. So until now, there are many public 3D benchmark data sets. For example, uh, ShipNet and the ModelNet are two commonly used data sets that provide uh, single isolated objects, while Kitty and uh, ScanNet are two large scale scene based data sets. Of course, there are still many uh, other data sets and I want to list them all here. So this significant growth of available 3D data sets pushes us to uh, redefine the, the problem of point cloud analysis from the perspective of big 3D data. Uh, on the other hand, we all know that uh, deep neural networks uh, have been applied to many fields with great success, uh, such as 2D computer vision, uh, natural language processing, or even AR or VR. So motivated by the above two points in recent years, there is a new trend of analyzing 3D point clouds using deep neural networks. However, uh, we cannot directly apply these deep neural networks that are developed for 2D images to 3D point clouds. Uh, next, I will uh, introduce several uh, challenges. The first one is that point cloud data is unstructured. They are not placed on a regular grid. For each point, its distance to, uh, to the neighboring points is not always fixed. So this is quite different from 2D images. Uh, the second challenge is that um, a point cloud is a set of points, so they are unordered. As I said, the order in which the points are stored doesn't change the object or the scene it represented. So due to the two challenges, uh, we cannot directly apply CNN to 3D point clouds. Uh, also, the third challenge is that uh, the real scanned points are often not evenly distributed uh, across different regions. For example, uh, some regions may be very dense, while others may be very sparse. So this is the uh, non-uniform property. Uh, also, an object in uh, 3D space can be rotated arbitrarily. No matter how this object is rotated, it is still this object itself. So how to ensure that the extracted features are not sensitive to the object orientation is also a challenge. Uh, of course, we all know that compared with 2D images, 3D data is harder to acquire and label. So how to maintain the stability of our algorithm and the low training resources is also uh, worth exploring. Uh, for the first two challenges, there are a lot of works that try to address like uh, PointNet, uh, DGCN, or uh, PointCN, et cetera. So I won't go into the uh, details of addressing the two challenges. Uh, for the non-uniform issue, uh, our next speaker, will, uh, Rui Hui, will uh, mention a bit. 
So in my talk, I will mainly focus on the two challenges and introduce our solutions. Uh, now let's move to our uh, first work, Rotation Environment Point Cloud Analysis. It was published in TVCG this year. Uh, let me first explain what is rotation environments. Uh, for a rotation environment method, the features extracted by the deep neural network should remain the same, given an input at arbitrary orientation. For example, uh, for the same point cloud with three different orientations, the extracted features should be the same because they all represent the same object. However, most existing point deep neural networks are rotation variants, meaning that uh, the extracted features are very sensitive to the object orientations. So to achieve rotation invariance, a common solution is that we can apply rotation augmentation to the training data. Um, however, if we apply the aggressive uh, rotation augmentation around the random axis, the network performance may be harmed because existing networks uh, don't have strong capacity to learn effective features from such unstable inputs. So existing works consider only the rotation augmentation around the gravity axis, but such limited augmentation cannot generalize well to the unseen angles. Uh, here I will show you um, a figure. Here the, the blue bar, uh, indicates the classification accuracy when we train and test the object with the rotation about the gravity axis. We can see that the classification accuracy is very high. Uh, the orange bar here shows the classification accuracy uh, when we train with the uh, gravity axis, but test with arbitrary orientations. And we can see that there is a significant performance drop so it means um, although we apply the uh, rotation augmentation during training, these networks are still sensitive to the orientations. So to address this, in our work, we argue that a framework is rotation environment if both network input and the network operations are rotation environment. So we propose a purely rotation environment network input and a rotation environment network architecture. Uh, now let's talk about the first point, how to design a purely rotation environment network input. Uh, it is not difficult to answer this uh, question. We can simply use relative attributes. Uh, for example, we can use this uh, relative angles or relative distances to replace point coordinates as network inputs. Uh, these relative attributes will not change no matter how we rotate this point cloud. But we should know that compared with the uh, original 3D coordinates, this simple relative uh, geometric information will cause a lot of information loss because given only these simple relative attributes, we cannot know how the original points are distributed in 3D space. So when we design the rotation environment network input based on these relative attributes, we should first try our best to minimize the information loss by uh, capturing both local and global information. And the uh, second thing we should pay attention to is that uh, when we design the rotation environment network input, um, it should be tolerant to noise because uh, in real application, it is unavoidable that the, uh, the scan 3D point clouds may be noisy. Uh, as for designing the rotation environment network input, uh, there are also two aspects that we should pay attention to. Uh, first, the network cannot involve any rotation variant elements or operations. For example, uh, some uh, attention module may be uh, designed based on the point coordinates. So uh, we cannot use this kind of operation. Um, second, considering that the, the relative information is too local. So when we design our network, we should pay uh, special attention to introduce more global information into the embedded point features. 
uh, not keeping these points in mind, let's first look at our uh, rotation environment uh, representations. Uh, for each point, PI, instead of feeding its uh, 3D coordinates into the network, we extract its global rotation environment representation and local rotation environment representation. This global representation can capture PI's location relative to the whole object and also to its local neighborhood, while the local representation can capture the local structure around PI. The local structure here means the <clears throat> spatial um, information between PI and its uh, neighbor point PIG. So in our global representation, uh, we designed uh, five pieces. So as shown in this sub figure, these green symbols are the uh, global uh, representations. And we can see that uh, they are all based on uh, relative angles or relative distances. So uh, they are purely rotation environment. So here I want to uh, mention that uh, MI, the point MI here means the uh, center of the local neighbors. Uh, a common choice of uh, calculating the center is the uh, centroid. We can uh, directly uh, calculate the average the point coordinates over all the neighboring points as the uh, center. Uh, however, uh, in our implementation, we use the geometric median because uh, this uh, geometric median is more robust against the noise. Uh, in the local representation, there are totally uh, seven pieces. Um, so uh, the, the red symbols uh, indicate our uh, local representations. Here I want to emphasize that um, our local representation is ambiguity free. Ambiguity free here means that using the seven pieces and uh, the position of PI, we can uniquely determine the position of PIG. So the uh, the, the local region is um, is not is ambiguity free. It means that different local regions have uh, their unique local representations. Otherwise, uh, it may cause ambiguity in the network training. Uh, this is our uh, designed network architecture. Uh, we design a deep hierarchical uh, network with totally three layers. Uh, these green boxes indicate the point coordinates. Uh, we don't feed them into the convolution module. Instead, we uh, extract uh, as rotation environment representations um, as these yellow boxes, and then feed the rotation environment representations into our uh, designed region relation convolution module to extract the rotation environment features. So uh, here shows the uh, detailed architecture of the region relation convolution. Uh, the key insight of this module is that uh, besides the uh, commonly used the shared MLP and max pooling, we further regress a weight. This weight is regressed from the uh, global relation matrix. This matrix can turn the uh, angles and the distances between all point pairs so this weight can uh, uh, reveal a certain of global relations between all the points. So in this way, when we introduce the weight into the uh, feature embedding process, the extracted features will encode not only local information, but also um, a certain of uh, non-local relations. Uh, so once we obtain the uh, embedded rotation environment code word, we can do various applications, uh, including shape classification, object part segmentation, and shape retrieval. Uh, here shows the uh, shape classification result. Uh, we can see that for our method, there is no performance drop, even test on the arbitrary orientations. Uh, this is the uh, visual comparison of the object part segmentation. Uh, our method is um, uh, the, the results produced by our method are the closest to the ground truth. Uh, this is the uh, ship retrieval result. Our method achieves the uh, best average score with a significant margin. Uh, so next, let's move to our second contribution, 
unsupervised distinctive region detection. Uh, this work was published in TOG last year. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, exploring unsupervised uh, learning is particularly uh, necessary because acquiring and uh, labeling, especially on 3D data, uh, is very uh, time consuming. Also, uh, without supervision, uh, the network can learn more possibilities freely. Uh, next, let me give the definition of ship distinction. Formally, the distinction of a surface region in an object is defined as how useful the region is for distinguishing the object from others of different types. Uh, this concept is hard to understand. So uh, next, I will show you an example for you to better understand this definition. Uh, now look at here. Uh, there is a, a spoon and a fork. Now, if I hide the top region and only show you the bottom region, um, <clears throat> can you still tell which is the spoon and which is the fork? Uh, obviously, the answer is no. Now, if I hide the bottom region and only show you the top region, I think all of you can easily distinguish the spoon and the fork. So in this example, we see that the top region is distinctive because the two regions can help us to distinguish the two different objects. So now let's see another example. Here is an ordinary spoon and a cartoon spoon. So how to distinguish them? In this case, we should look at the handle part. So we see that Given the two kinds of spoons, the handle regions are now distinctive. So from the two examples, we can draw two conclusions. First, the distinctive regions of a shape should be common and unique in its own type compared with shapes of other types. Uh, second, the distinctiveness of a region is quantified relative to a given set of 3D shapes. Uh, this means that for the same region, its distinctiveness may change according to different given sets. So after understanding the, uh, the definition of shape distinction, uh, you may ask, why do we need to detect the distinctive regions? Uh, now I uh, present several typical applications. Uh, first, we can uh, employ the distinctive regions to perform the fine-grained uh, shape retrieval. For example, given this region as distinctive, we can retrieve chairs with similar substructures. Um, second, we can do the distinctiveness guided point cloud sampling. Uh, as shown here, when we do the point cloud sampling, we can preserve more points on these distinctive regions. So in this way, even with fewer points, we can easily tell that uh, the engine of this airplane uh, is located on the tail part. Uh, third, we can do the best view selection. We can show these views with the maximized distinctiveness because these views uh, commonly contain more useful information. Uh, actually, we are not the uh, first to explore shape distinction. In 2007, uh, this uh, work first introduced the concept of shape distinction and uh, uh, designed a traditional method to detect distinctive regions. Uh, about three years ago, a weekly supervised deep learning method uh, was proposed. But in our work, uh, to avoid the annotation efforts, we propose an unsupervised method. Uh, from the definition of distinction, we could know that the essence of uh, distinctive detection is to classify objects. So in our work, we transform the problem of distinctive detection to the problem of shape classification. Also considering that analyzing point clouds is much easier than analyzing a 3D shape or a mesh. So uh, in our work, we uh, sample points on each shape as the network inputs. So given a set of unlabeled point clouds, we design our network to extract per point features and per ship features. The per point features will be uh, later used to extract the per point distinctiveness 
while the per ship features will be used to conduct the unsupervised ship clustering. So the key contribution uh, of this work is the unsupervised joint loss function. Uh, it contains uh, two loss terms, clustering-based non-parametric soft max loss and the advanced contrastive loss. This clustering um, loss can drive the network to cluster objects in an unsupervised manner. And the contrastive loss can help stabilize and enhance the network learning. So next, let's go to the uh, details of each loss term. Uh, we first review the uh, commonly used supervised softmax classifier. Um, the probability of the jth object being recognized as the Q's class is this equation. The WK here means the class prototype of, of the case class. It is learned from the provided class labels. So if no class labels are given, this equation cannot be used. However, um, an observation found that when a network has successfully converged, the class prototype W is usually consistent with the average of all the feature vectors belonging to the same class. So motivated by this, we formulated this equation. We use the G bar to replace the, the WK here. The G bar means the average feature vector over all the per ship features within the same cluster. It means that during training, uh, we use a clustering algorithm to cluster all the per ship features into different clusters. And then within the same cluster, we calculate the average feature vector as the G bar to replace WK. So in this way, uh, uh, the cluster loss is formulated uh, by minimizing the uh, negative log likelihood of this probability. Um, however, it is inevitable that some training samples may be wrongly clustered. So relying only on this loss may not be sufficient to drive the network learning. So to stabilize and enhance the network training, uh, we further formulate this adapted contrastive loss uh, instead of feeding uh, only one sample, we input a triplet, uh, which consists of an anchor, a positive sample, and a negative sample. The anchor and the positive sample should be in the same cluster, uh, but the anchor and the negative uh, sample should be in different cluster. And then we use this equation to uh, encourage the anchor and the positive sample to be close to each other while pushing away the anchor and the negative sample. So uh, finally, uh, the per point distinctiveness is obtained by taking the uh, maximum value of each row in the per point features. Uh, since our final goal is to uh, detect a distinctive region on a 3D shape, so we uh, further project the proponent distinctiveness on the point cloud back to the original ship for visualization. Uh, here shows some uh, examples of the detected distinctive regions. Uh, red color means that these regions are more distinctive. For example, uh, for, for this person ship, our uh, network found that uh, the head, hands, and feet are uh, more distinctive, while the uh, body part is not distinctive. Uh, also, we uh, explore the uh, effect of using uh, different training sets. So in this experiment, we uh, prepared two kinds of training data sets. In the first training data set, we collected some four engine airplanes and the tail engine airplanes. And then we use this kind of data set to tune our network and then test the network on the four engine airplanes. And we, uh, we, we can find that uh, our network detects all the four engines as distinctive. On the other hand, uh, in the second training data set, we collected uh, some four engine airplanes and uh, two engine airplanes. And in this case, 
our network detects only the outer two engines as distinctive. So this experiment shows that our method can, uh, can indeed find and highlight the, the difference between uh, different classes. Uh, next, I will show you some uh, typical applications. The first one is uh, ship retrieval. Uh, in the ship retrieval, generally, uh, we, we use the per ship global feature to calculate the ship similarity. Uh, however, uh, to facilitate the fine-grained intra-class ship retrieval, we can select only the more distinctive proponent features and average over them as the uh, global feature to calculate the ship similarity. Uh, so here shows the results. Uh, clearly with the uh, help of our uh, detected uh, distinctive uh, region and the retrieved uh, ships are more similar to the queries. For example, this query chair has four fixed legs and all the retrieved chairs have the uh, have similar substructures. The second application is the distinctiveness guided sampling. Uh, different from the traditional poison disk sampling, uh, we can sample uh, uh, more points. Uh, we can uh, we can sample points by by preserving more points on the distinctive regions. So from the plots, we can see that uh, even the point number is very uh, small we can easily tell that this airplane has uh, totally four engines. Uh, the last application is the wheel selection in 3D scenes. Uh, we here define the uh, best wheels in a 3D scene as those with the maximize the distinctiveness. So compared with this worst wheels, uh, our selected best wheels can deliver more useful information. Uh, so that's all of our uh, two works. Uh, here comes to the final part, conclusion and future work. Uh, in today's talk, I uh, introduced our two works, rotation environment, point cloud analysis, and unsupervised distinctive region detection. Uh, however, the, uh, the field of uh, deep point cloud analysis is still at its infant stage, and more efforts can be done to progress forward. So here I uh, briefly present some future works. Uh, the first one is how to extend existing works from single object analysis to large scale uh, 3D scenes. Uh, second, we can also explore the few short or unsupervised learning. Um, also, we can, uh, we can also explore the uh, domain adaptation or transfer learning because the uh, data distribution scanned by different devices may be quite different. Uh, so finally, uh, let me take this chance to uh, thank my two uh, supervisors and uh, all my collaborators. They provide me strong support in my previous works. Uh, so that's all of my uh, sharing. We have shared our calls. Welcome to uh, have a try. Thank you.